theyeshiva.net. Okay, good morning, everybody. So we have one paragraph to go. Samach Beis, Ahmed Aleph, Vihine Ksiv, Benohar Yavru Beregel, Shom Nismechaboy. Pasuk in Tehillim says that through the river they will pass Beregel with the leg. It says Tehillim Kapitol Samachvav, Shom Nismechaboy. Over there we will rejoice in him. That's the expression in Tehillim. You have you, this is a Tehillim here. You can give it to me. No, no, right, right in front of you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Tehillim Samachvav. So Davra Melech says, Hafach Yam Liyabasha. He transformed the sea to dry land. Banohar Yavru Beregel. Through the river, they'll pass by foot. Sham, there, Nismich We will rejoice in him. The interesting thing about this Pasuk is, it changes from past tense to future tense. He starts off, Hafach Yam Liyabasha, which is in the past. Hafach is not Yehapech, but he has transformed the yam, the sea, into dry land. But then he speaks, Benar Yavru Beregel. Through the river they'll pass by foot. Sham there nismechaboy. Not samachnu, we rejoiced, we will rejoice. She says, Ki ata, ki hine ata bizman hazel le shayech pchines simcha. Because notwithstanding everything that's been explained with Kriyas Yamsov, now in this, this time, the real ultimate reality of Simcha is missing, is wanting. Sha Simchi Mibchinis is Galos. Because joy is rooted in the realm of revelation, complete revelation. Va'ata bizman haza ain bibchinizu is Galos. And now in our time, what we spoke before, Havaya de la'ela, is ultimately not fully manifested. Kiyem emuna, which is why we call it emuna, machmas hester haguf, because there are so many blockages. There's the blockage of the human experience due to our, our, our containers, which allow for emuna, which is an experience that we call a munna, but it's not the ultimate is So In the future, when the Pasik says it'll be Bilahamavas, <clears throat> death will be swallowed up forever. Bilahamavas Lanatzach. Ksiv, the expression of the Navi is ki ayin ba'ayin yiru. Ki ayin ba'ayin yiru is the Navi Yeshaya. Chapter 52, Nun Beis, Ban, he says, the expression, they'll see eye to eye, right? Ayin ba'ayin. We'll see, eye to eye we'll see. What does it mean? So he says, ayin ba'ayin, there's two eyes. Ayin ba'ayin, we'll see eye to eye. Ayin ba'ayin, u'bchinas alma de'eskasya. B'chinas seivav kalalmin, u'metachaz re'es o'lam. And then there's Alma de Isgalia. She is Galu Beis Havayas Hanal. Ayin Ba'ayin are two eyes, means two perspectives, two vantage points, <laughs> two dimensions, two ways of looking at something. Every person has their own eyes, right? We say, you have your eyes, you have your glasses, the paradigms through which you experience reality, how, how much you can experience of reality. At that point, it'll be Ayin Ba'ayin Yiru. <laughs> The two eyes will be able to meet. All perspectives in the world can be ultimately categorized into two. Either it's Havaya de la Sata <laughs> or it's Havaya de la Ela. It's one of those two. Of course, within each, there's endless eyes. But ultimately, it's one eye or another eye. 
So I am buying Yiru is, is just one eye in his Alma discuss the eye, the perspective of Amadaz the concealment, which we also call Pchinus, Saiv of Kalam, which encompasses all of the worlds as one. It's all very uh, cold language. The Pasuk says in Vizay Sabrach, Moshe says, which is an enigmatic statement, but it's obviously like the arms under the world. Imagine the world being embraced by arms, right? Umitachas roys oilums, roys are arms. Mitachas is under, oilum is the world. Like arms embracing the whole, the whole cosmos, not just the planet, the whole world, oilum. So that's like soiv of Kalalman. It encompasses all the worlds. Then there's another ayin, Almadiz Galya. What I actually see with my eyes. That's this ayin. Actually, the physical eye. She is galu beis haviyasanal. There'll be ayin ba ayin yiru. One ayin will be able to see the other ayin because both havayas will emerge as one in a revealed way. Kila asid ksiv. The pasuk says about the future. This is the haftar of achron shal pesach yeshaya pedikid aluf. The pasuk speaks about another kriyas yamsuf that when the Jewish people come back by the gul it says vehechrim hashemes l'shoyn yamid yamitzrayim. God is going to dry up <coughs> the tongue of the Sea of Egypt, and strike it into seven uh, paths, seven rivers. It shall be a path for the rest of his nation, as it was to the Jewish people when they led the day they ascended from Egypt. This is the expression. The quote from Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 11, after of Achen Shal Pesach, which is the after about Mashiach, Oid Hayoim Benayv. Hainu she is Gala Alma de Eskasya. Which that will be another Kriyas Yamsov. Again, the revelation of Yam, which is Alma de Eskasya. Val Zenema, that's what the Pesach says in Tehillim. Benar Yavru Beregel Sham Nism Chalosh and Osset. There we will rejoice in the future. Vesham Daiken Nism Chabasogas Avaya Delayla. There, there will be the nismecha. Mashenkin ata she'ene ele b'bchines amuna. By Kriyas Yamsuf, now it says in Peshalach, vayaminu ba'avaya. David HaMelech says until him, sham, there, in the future, nismecha, because it'll be the full revelation. And Simcha is connected with his galos. Rak shahayoyim la'asoy simksiv, ulemach l'kabul scharam. The Gemara says, Sech Te'erivin, today is the time of La'asoysam, to do. Ulamachar, tomorrow, Chuli, is L'Kabul Scharim, is a time of reward. Pasuk says in Dvarim, Eschanan, Hayoyim La'asoysam, today to do. So it says, today is for doing. Tomorrow is for reward. What does this mean? It says, Shayoyim Tzarech Lasas. Today the focus of life is Lasas, action. Ayidei Sur Meira, through going away from the ra, from the brokenness, from the toxicity, from the negativity, pchines bitl v'hoida, u b'sarusa de l'sata chuli, k'mashin es And as he said before in the beginning of the moment, the first, the first paragraph, that the sur meira of the person creates above the yud and the hay and the vav and the hay, our tzimtzum creates a tzimtzum there, which creates the shem avaya, even the le'elah. What's the, what's the Havana of this? So there's three stages. There's the stage before Kriyas Yamsuf. There was Kriyas Yamsuf. Then we say, Vayiru Amis Hashem, Vayaminu Bashem, Ubamaisha Avda. And then there's the Avaida post Kriyas Yamsuf, which leads ultimately to the second Kriyas Yamsuf by the Geula, when we say, Sham Nismachabai. Ayin ba ayin yiru, and there'll be another kriyas yamsuf, but on a different level than the first kriyas yamsuf, which will result not in vayaminu only, but in sham nismachabai, a sense of real simcha. He says, now is a muna, and then is simcha. Because when there is the full hisgalos, it's not called a muna, it's called simcha. He says, now because there's still blockages, so therefore we call it a muna. Vayaminu ba vaya. So you have Re'iyah, Vayiru, 
we have deeper Vayaminu, which comes after Vayiru. And then there's something even deeper, and that's the Simcha, Sham Nismcha Boy. As he says, when it's completely Behizgalas, it's completely revealed. Vayiru, he says, is Havaya de Lasata, Alma de Zgalia. But then he could say Yira. Vayaminu is Havaya de Laela, Alma de Skasia. There you can't say Vayiru, there you could say Amuna. Yeah. In the future, there's another Kriya Siamsov. Over there, it's a Sham Nism Sham, in the future. Because over there will be full his galus, even, and therefore it's not even a Muna. It's, be, it's, not, it's, it's beyond the Muna. It's without a Hester. Ayin Ba'ayin Yiru. And it's not that the two are detached, it's the two are one. Today is the part of Asiya, and then is the part of Revelation. That's a It's not two separate things. It means there's it's two phases in one thing. The Amunna and the Simcha come together. One is the phase of Avoida, where there's still a blockage, and then there is the expression, the full revelation of what that Avoida is. It's not it's not two separate uh, two separate things. The Lamachar is a tomorrow from today. There's no tomorrow without today. It's a continuum. It's the ultimate realization of what you did, of what of what you believed, of what you were working with. And for this process, as he said, you need Moshe. Shepherding, shepherding the Amun the silence of Atam Tacharishin. Moshe connects the two Havayas, Havayas, which will be revealed in Eifen of Simcha, of real Hizgalos. I mean, that's basically the... So now, how do we understand the Pasuk at the end? Vayar Yisrael, a sayad agdoyla asher osa havaya b'mitzrayim. For the first time, they saw a yad hagdoyla. They saw a psayad that's not a regular yad. It's a yad hagdoyla. Asher osa havaya b'mitzrayim. As he says, osa havaya d'la'ela. Something that comes from Avaya de Laela. In other words, they saw a manifestation of that in the world through Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and primarily through Kriyas Yamsov. Unlike Paroi, who said, who struggled, said, Havaya, I don't know. Right? Me, Havaya, Sheshma, Bekele, who's this Havaya? Lo Yadati, I don't know about him. And he, he says his war was not on Avaya de Lasata, which is more associated with Shema Lekim, but his war was on Avaya de Laela. Kriyas Yamsov was the end of Mitzrayim and Parai, the end of the reign, not just physical, but psychological, emotional. What is that expressed in? That Parai's denial of Havaya is now gone. So, which Hashem said many times, that's Vayikra Hashem Hashem Kel Racham Vichano. Moshe, is Vayikra Hashem Hashem? He asked in the beginning of the Maimon, Vayavra Hashem Alpana Vayikra. Hashem Hashem Kel Racham Vachanon. This Maimon teaches who's Vayikra? Moshe is the one who calls out both Hashems. What's Moshe's role? Hashem Hashem. Havaya Havaya. To bring Havaya de Laela into the reality of Havaya de Lasata. Which is what Havaya Amina by Havaya of Moshe does. That's why you give me this Harachimim. There's two Hashems. Vayikra, Moshe calls Hashem Hashem. The job of Moshe is not to remain in one Hashem, whether it's Le'ela or Lesata, Vayikra Hashem Hashem, to integrate what seems like two separate realities, and could be two separate realities, into one. That's why he calls two Hashems. That's how he answers the question right in the beginning of the Maimah, what's the Hashem Hashem? That's the connection to this Maimah, with Moshe. Vayikra Hashem Hashem. That's his function. Raya Mehemna, to shepherd Emuna to give the flock, to nurture them, to feed them a munna, meaning to help them connect Havaya de la'ela with Havaya de la'sat. Asher Asa Havaya be Mitzrayim, he said also includes something else, which he went back to now. And that is Asher Asa Havaya be Mitzrayim, that the Jewish people saw their ability to create Havaya through Mitzrayim. Because just like Havaya de la'sat is Yud and He and Vav and He, like we spoke, Havaya de la'ela also has these four. Because when you imagine something in your mind, you're imagining what it will be. So it has the same process. Who creates that Yud? He said, when a person does tzimtzum in him, which is surmeira, when I disconnect from that which is tempting or addictive, and I have to go back to my core, that's a tzimtzum. 
that yud in the person creates the yud above the havaya de leil. Asha'asa havaya only through Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim means restriction. That's the power of a person. Every time I restrict myself, meaning I hold back from that which will distract me from who I am and who I really am and numb my pain, that's a yud. And your mama is going to a nakuda. It's called withdrawal symptoms. That's what a yud is. And it's very painful because uh, whatever my outlet is, is comforting, it's calming, it's soothing. Whether it's uh, binging is a good example for it, right? I'm stressed or this, and there's a, there's, there's, there's a piece of chocolate there, a piece of cake there, whatever, a slice of pizza. I don't want to say a salad, because that would actually not be withdrawal. That would, that would probably... <laughs> but but that, 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 that sugar, whatever it is, it's very attractive. What, a, what, what does it take for me to hold back? I become a yud. You really feel like you become a yud, you know? Because all your attachments are gone. What are you left with? I'm giving binging as an example, but you can give another 20,000 examples. Everybody knows in their life uh, what, what it is. Sur meira means I have to disconnect from anything that's creating an illusion of connection. And that's very, that's not pushed. So you think it's just an act of discipline and self-discovery, which it is. Balatanya says, you know what that does? Through your Mitzrayim, Asa Havaya. It creates the Havaya de Leila. It creates the Yud in Hashem. Asay Toiv is expansion, it's positive, positive connections, good connections, that creates the hay, which is the Hispashtas above. And the Yud is always deeper than the hay, because holding back is always deeper than engaging. <clears throat> because you're, you're disconnecting from so much and you really come to a place of, of self-discovery much more through Sur Meirah than Asay Toiv. You would think it's the other way, but he says not. Sur Meirah helps you discover much more than Asay Toiv. Huh? Loisasa, loisasa, yeah. Because there's, there's, there's nothing tangible. <laughs> You're left with yourself, you understand? I say toiv is, of course, tremendous. It's positive, it's good things. It's called positive hispashtos. Sur meira is cutting the ties. It's, it's, I, it's, it's, it's abstaining. Discipline. Yeah. But it's that discipline that opens me up to, to the truth. Yeah, it's like going back to, to a, a deeper place. He says, Lav kaidem lahain. The bitlin, the, the lav always precedes the hain. It's much deeper. So the sarusa, the lasata of a person doing that simtsum, what does it become? It becomes God's yud. It be Hashem's simtsum. It becomes his yud. It's like a mirror. My yud translates the divine response. It's like a mirror. Hashem mirrors my yud. That yud of Havaya de Leila, which means there's no way of touching Havaya de Leila without challenging yourself in such a deep way. In other words, science without morality right, will never allow a person to touch Havaya de Leila. Havaya de Leila you can only touch through Avoida, through the person's real transformation. If not, I, cannot, I will not tune into it. To tune into it, I have to go into my yud and my hay and my vav and my hay, which actually mirrors back to me that experience kivayachal by Hashem from his sarusad I'm sorry, what? He speaks here in the middle of this paragraph about the shiva nachal. Shiva nachal, that's from the Pasuk, yeah. That's seven streams. Seven streams. Connected to this, it has to do with the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's Shiva. That the gili will be in each one of the middas. In each one of the middas, there'll be the gili of al In each one of the Shiva Nechalim. By Kriyas Yamsuf, now it says in Chumash, it was a Kriyas Yamsuf. Chazal speak about it. The 12 paths of the Shvatim is a separate Indian. But Lasid Lavi, it says Dafka Shiva. So it's 12 by Kriyas Yamsuf, and 7 is 19. 19 paths. That's your test. Connected to Yutas Kislev. No, no, it's not a joke. No, no, because Kriyas Yamsov was the Hachana for Matan Torah. They couldn't get to the first Matan Torah without Kriyas Yamsov. 
the future Kriya Samsov will be also Hachanat the Matan Torah, the Matan Torah of Pnimi Yisat Torah. Rashi says in the beginning of Shir Hashirim, Yishakeni min Ashikos Pihu, Ki Toivim Daidecha Miyayin. Right. So Rashi says, till now there was no kiss from the mouth. But also, Lavi is going to kiss us on the mouth. So Rashi says, Yigali is going to reveal to the Jewish people Soi Ta'ameho O Mistrets for Neisaha. The secret of its reasons and the concealments of its hidden parts. This is a Rashi in the beginning of Shashi. The Pasuk says, Hadasha It doesn't mean a new Matan Torah, a replacement of the first Matan Torah. Chas V'Shalom, Torah is Nitzchis, Loi Mechlefes. But the Gili of Pnimi is a Torah, in an oifen of Simcha, not an oifen of Amuna, that's the second Kriyas Yamsuf. has to be a Hachana for that. So the first Kriyas Yamsuf was 12, the second was Kriyas Yamsuf was... Uh, was was seven together? It's nineteen. It's the synthesis. Nineteen is the synthesis of both Kriyas Yamsuf, which is the synthesis of both elements of Torah. Which, in the world of Torah, is Almadis Galia and Almadis Kasya. Nigla of Torah is Almadis Galia, Havaya de Lasata, and Pnimi is a Torah. It's called Almadis Kasya. And the Chibur, the ultimate synthesis between them, right, is Ayin Ba Ayin Yiru. That's nineteen. And for that, you need the Kriyas Yamsuf, each one in its own realm. There's one Kriyas Yamsuf, another Kriyas Yamsuf. And then there is the complete integration between the two, which is Sham Nismechabai. That integration always exists, but there's a process in the experience of it, in the internalization of it, in the human being working through all of the containers, all of the kalim, all of the concealments, in order to be able to uh, experience that full integration. So he says, you make havaya through Mitzrayim. What's Mitzrayim? Mitzrayim is restriction. My yud creates the yud lamayla. My hay creates the hay lamayla. That's something else they saw. They didn't only see havaya de Leila as a passive thing. Havaya de Leila had to transform their own paradigm. You make Havaya de Leila. You almost define Havaya de Leila. It's always through a relationship that you experience Havaya de Leila, not through passive scientific scrutiny. That's a revolutionary idea. If not, you don't touch that. You're just not going to touch it. You'll touch manifestations of, of, of genius, of brilliance, of, of a brilliant phone that, that was washed ashore. But to touch Havaya de Leila, you have to go into a, a, a different place. And then, they, therefore, that's what they saw. So they didn't only see Havaya de Leila as, wow, God, God is more interesting than we thought. They saw that they make it. <laughs> you define it. Kevayachal. I shouldn't say you define it. Your avoid is megalit. Huh? Accesses it. What? Is, is, uh, yeah, that's what Nochem asked in the beginning of the Maimah. What are you giving me headaches for? If it's, uh, Why make a shidduch between two people who are perfectly fine without each other, right? But apparently the, hum the human condition is anxious, no, I think. <laughs> mm. Somehow there's still a little anxiety in the world. A little bit. There's something that is not fully connected, right? <laughs> it's expressed in different ways, but... Uh... Okay. That's how we go to sleep. But if you analyze your dreams, you'll see that even in the middle of the sleep... <laughs> No, always, always. There's moments, there's milestones, you know, you break through certain things. Mm -hmm. But the Yud is, is, a constant, is a constant process because there's always things that lure us into their uh, delusional traps of attachments, fake attachments. And I need the Yud, I have to, Mamash be to myself to a seminal point, like I have to let go of everything. And what am I left with? It looks like I'm left with nothing. And that really touches your core. And it's a very, very deep experience. It's becoming a yud. And you know what a yud looks like, right? It's, it's your mamashanakuda. Like, but 
but this I have, I, you know, I have these websites, I have this food, I have these addictions, I have these habits, I have these relationships, I have these connections, I have these movies, I have these addictions, I have these uh, uh, business obsessions, right? I have these these type of clothes, these trips, these vocations, whatever it is. Kol chad from Shura Delay. I'm not going to get too graphic here, or specific, <coughs> and and to 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 stop it all. You know, it's called silence. The atom tacharishan. It's silence. It's becoming a yud. That's in a way much deeper than I say toiv, because it's really going. Put it this way: you. you Somebody wrote to me, and the, the, for, for, you can't applaud yourself on that so much, you know? There's no plaque for it. For doing something, there's a plaque. For not doing something, who's going to give you a plaque? <laughs> a lady, some, somebody wrote me an email after the first year on this. She said, she said, for doing, you get a plaque. You'll become an honoree at a dinner. Not doing, what are gonna, we're going to honor him for what? <laughs> There was chocolate on the counter and he didn't need it. <laughs> it's a Latsanas. In other words, what are you honoring? What are you, not. There's no substance here. There's no. It was just not, 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 not. Nu and was, yeah. That's, that's the Yud. So he says, Hain, koidem, lav, koidem, lahain. Simtsum, the bitl and the simtsum is koidem, lahain. It touches a deeper place. And what does it do? Lamayla, kavayachal. Everything is Hashem Tzilcha. God is our shadow, like the Baal Shem Tov said. That by Hashem, from infinity comes a Yud. <laughs> by Hashem, that's the biggest symptom. From Ein Saif, which is everything, to become a Yud, which creates a relationship. So your symptom creates a reciprocal symptom of Babasha. Asa Havaya. He makes Havaya bimitzrayim through his own Mitzrayim. And that you can only have if you have a Mitzrayim that you have to go away from. And then there's Vayiruam, which is this Yira, and then there's Vayaminu Bavaya Bamashavde, and then there's La Asid Love Sham Nismachaboy. So it's not it's beyond the Muna because a Muna is a Hester. So he says, today we feel more than La Soisam. Hayoim La Soisam. The main feeling of Schar is Lamachar tomorrow. To make that he says today the main avoid is La Saisam, as he puts it at then Bittl Vaido Bisarusa de la Sati created Sarusa de Layla. And then the Asid Lava is the gilui of what the Avaida really is. It's really, yeah, it's also Bismanas there. The question is his galus. In other words, what am I really aware of? What am I aware of? Somebody who's Sadi and has reached where I love, I believe that they can tear into Okay. From experience, you know this. Okay. You know, I don't argue with that. I don't argue with that. Okay. Okay. That's real. That's, that's a real symptom. It's, it's, it's going away from everything to my core. And only then do I discover my core because there's no distractions left. And the fascinating thing is it's not the discussion of this Maimer, but in other Maimarim, there's a point that symptom kevayachal. It's it's a um, it's a whole other by Hashem Kvayachal also pre Tzimtzum was oy, infinity and the Tzimtzum allows so to speak a manifestation of God's core which is not defined by infinity but but equally by relationships and by finiteness so in a way his Tzimtzum is also going to a deeper place even than the oy. Okay, but that's uh, that's uh, it's a separate sugi it's not uh, I'm just mentioning that. Walter Rebbe says it in one place, that the Tzimtzum brought out Hashem's Atzmos <laughs> more than before because it cut away the whole infinite uh, thing. <laughs> now, not to minimize infinity. Infinity is pretty uh, it's good stuff, infinity. But, so, by, so our Tzimtzum, how do I do that? By my Tzimtzum. Now, you can't compare the two because my Tzimtzum is maybe with an addiction or or some habit, or anger, or explode. People have their stuff that you rely on to numb you from your pain. Let's be practical. And to do tzimtzum from that is a shtikl mesir nefesh. I may be used to, it's even thoughts, you know? Maybe your whole life you're used to responding to a particular trigger in a certain way, right? You say this, and it's predictable. <laughs> it's predictable. Usually they say in many marriages, there's one argument, and it plays itself out over 65 years. You know what I mean? 
It, it's one argue, it's one issue, it's one argument. That's the Alma discussy of it. It could be a thousand, it's really one argument. The argument started when he was three years old. It didn't start when he was married. In other words, it's a certain perception of reality. And whenever you say, whatever you say, it triggers it. Today it's in this area and that area and that area and that area, but it's really one Nakuda. So it's really, it's, 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 when a person can understand that, can be aware of that, go back to that Nakuda. So we have our ways. So you'll say something, or your wife will say something, your husband will say something, your friend, your employer, your employee, your brother, your sister, whatever it is, your father, your mother. And uh, you know where your mind goes, right? The reason your mind goes there is, is a survival mechanism. It's always that way. Your mind is trying to survive. We don't blame. We don't blame ourselves for this. Your brain is doing a good job. Listen, you survived to some degree. Miserable, but you survived. Better than dead. There's somebody to tell the story. There's somebody to come to, to, to come to the shear, right? So you got to give your mind, your brain credit for being a genius and developing a way of escapism, of going somewhere to somehow make you deal with the situation in one way or another. Maybe the thought is. Uh, that this person is impossible. Just You make peace with that. It's a way of surviving. Maybe the thought is, God just hates me and I was born with bad mazel. That's a way people go through. You know that machshava? You know, I'm just, I was born to be miserable. And in a way, it's like a sort of benuchas anafesh. I mean, nebach, but you know the benuchas anafesh? Like, I'm miserable, you don't understand, Baruch Hashem. Uh, <laughs> Poor you, you were raised in a different situation. But uh, some people, they just have this pattern. You know, I was born to be miserable. I am that person. I'm, and in a way, it's like, it makes sense of my life. Everything makes sense. In a way, it's survival, huh? Yeah, there's a certain peace. Like, it's expected. It's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen in 20 minutes. It's going to happen in two hours, yeah? I'm, I, am the, I am the target. You know, the target where you shoot the arrow? Oh, that's me. You have a knife. I'm, I'm the guy. Or whatever the pattern is, whether it's aggression against somebody else or it's aggression against yourself. But it's always your thought going to certain places to be able to deal with this situation that's triggering something deep. And what happens if I could stop that? That's called symptom. And that's not easy. <laughs> stop. Catch yourself. We're not going there today. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> Where are we going? And I'm, I'm frightened. When I, of course I go here. This is the place to go. This is my comfort zone. This is the only place I don't get hurt. This is the place I don't get hurt. Rabbi Isaac, you with me? Yeah? To stop that, you know how hard it is? I don't mean you. I mean all of us. Yitzchak is just the name of the first Jew, so it's kind of everybody. <laughs> Huh? My name too. My name too. Don't worry. Huh? The first Jew is Yitzchak. And it means simcha, laughter. Right? That's the fascinating thing. The first Jew is Yitzchak. And the Altar Rebbe says at the end is simcha. Avram wasn't born a Jew. Avram was the first gay. Rosh Legadim, the Gemara says. Yitzchak is the first Jew. <laughs> he grew up in a Jewish, in a Jewish family. So the beginning is simcha, the end is simcha, sham nismcha boy. In between, yeah, is amuna. So when I'm going to those places to be able to, it's not just an addiction, you know, I'm going to drink. That's also hard to stop, but there's much more subtle things. Where your brain goes, my brain runs here. To be able to stop that and say, we're not doing that, we're not going there. So we, what, what are we, we're not going there. Where else is there to go? I don't know yet. I don't know where, there, where else there is, but maybe we could reshape this. We could rethink that. That could be dangerous. Because you could not yourself foolishly to be Of course. Uh, to no, no. Exactly saying, okay, it, that's, that's exactly why the brain goes there, to avoid anything else. And yes, as, as we always know, you, there's people who are there to manipulate. I don't know, they did it with people who could manipulate consciously or unconsciously, maliciously or not maliciously. And one always has to know if the advice they're getting is bringing them closer to their core or not closer to their core. Of course. 
one shouldn't be uh, vulnerable to a point where they allow any uh, any force to destroy them. That's that's a given. And you're right. When people are very vulnerable, people could take advantage of them. There's no question. I was uh, where was I was speaking to have to the group of Haver, you have Haverim and Munsi. You know the. You ever find yourself without gas in the highway, or you're not such a shlomazel like me, huh? There's no gas. You call chaverim, and they come with gas, huh? Flat tire. You don't fix your own flat tires. Okay, far tayid, huh? So they had a dinner to honor the chaverim, all the chaverim. So uh, it's like 120, 130 with their wives. So, uh, so I told them a word. I said that. Uh, in in uh, <laughs> interesting insight, I think it says in, in, in the Chumash twice that somebody was found by an ish. In Parshas Vayishlach, it says Yaakov was alone. Vayeovik ish imoy, a man wrestled with him. So Rashi says it was Sarah shall Esav, Esav's angel. Next Parsha, Vayeshev, it says Yosef got lost. Vayimtzeihu ish, and a man found him. Rashi says Malach Gavriel. I said, wait, 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 this is not fair. It says the same word, ish. Here it's Esav and here it's Kavriel. Come on. <laughs> Where's intellectual integrity and consistency? If ish is Esav, ish is Esav. So Rashi is saying, look at the context. The two people in both parishes remain alone and they're lost. They're lost. Which would be metaphoric of being lost in life. Yeah. In Yaakov's case, he's alone. There's nobody there. No attachments. Levada, he's alone. He's a Yud. A man finds him, and what happens? Ooh, you're alone in a dark alley? Let me kill you. I can't kill you? Let me maim you. Rashi says that's Sarah Shalaisaf. Yosef is also alone. Lost, vulnerable. His father's not there. His brothers are not there. A man meets him, vulnerable kid, 17 years old. And the man says two words, Matevakish. What are you searching for? And Yosef says, I'm looking for my brothers. Rashi says, that's Malach Gavriel. So you, when you see a person alone, vulnerable, stripped from everything, one person says, ooh, this is an opportunity to punch him in the nose. This is an open punch. <laughs> whatever that punch means. And another person says, how can I help you find what you're looking for? That's the key difference. Same word, ish, but look at the context. When a person is stripped from everything and you're alone in your vulnerability, that's called a yud. That's one of the most naked moments in life. Right? At such a moment, you have to be able to tell yourself, matavakish, what are you looking for? And you'll always see the answer will be I'm looking for a brother. I'm looking for my brother. Whatever that brother means. That moment, says the Balatanya, the Rebbeinu Shaloylam Hashem in his Ain Soif reveals himself in the same way. He also goes through that symptom. The symptom you just went through will be reciprocated in the divine you can make the shame Havaya through your own Mitzrayim. That same process happened. It's not just you're alone in the world, but you're a good guy. No, no, no. In that aloneness, right, the infinite one, who's Mamish infinite, condenses himself to a core, to a seminal point called Yud. Then your hay will create a hay, your Vav will create a Vav. That's what I told you the first day what the Baal Shem Tov said about Tzedakah, you remember? When you take out a coin and you give it, so it's Yud, Hey, and Vav, Hey, it shouldn't be the other way. Because what, what I do, what everything I do or feel or experience creates that energy in all of the worlds, including in the source of all the worlds. That's the majesty of a human being, the, the power of a human being. I said recently, I don't know if some of you heard, I was in California, I know some of you told me they heard a lecture from the Vart of the Maggit, a similar Vart about by, by Kriyas Yamsuf, Hashem looked like a, uh, a bacher, and by Mitzrayim he looked like a kid, and by Matan Taira he looked like an old man. So the Maggit says, I thought Hashem doesn't have images. The Mechilta says, 
on Beshalach, that when the Jews left Mitzrayim, Hashem appeared like a child, like an infant. At the Yamsuf, he looked like a bocher, you know, a teenager. And at Kriyas Yam, at Matan Torah, he looked like an old man, a sage. That's what the Mechilta says. So the Maggid says, I thought God doesn't have images. So the Maggid says that uh, an incredible insight that a, a, a parent has the image of a child engraved in their head. Your child's image is engraved. And therefore, it's part of you. It, it becomes you. It's, it's the image. If I look at your brain, so to speak, if I can have an x-ray, I see your child. Okay, because it's because of the love. So the Maggid says, how is your child engraved? What does he look like? Or she look when they're engraved? And the answer is exactly what they look like. When he's one, it's one. And when he's 10, he's 10. And when he's 18, he's 18. And when he's 40, he's 40. It's exactly what it looks like. And then the Maggid says, and when he makes a, uh, when he defecates, that's, that's exactly what he looks like. Sometimes he's very clean and sometimes he's dirty. So he says, Hashem, the image of every child is engraved and therefore that image becomes, so to speak, the divine. And exactly the way the child is. So he says, by Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, the Jews were like infants. They were just born. So that's what God appeared like. And by Kriya Syamsov, like a teenager, and by Matan Taira Azakan, because that's where they were holding, because that was their experience. Because that was their experience, that becomes the divine, because my image, the child's image is engraved. And then he adds, and if a child is filthy and full of excrement, that image goes into the child, which means, that's the, he says, the Pshat and the Pasuk, in Yeshaya Rochat, Hashem is Tsoyas Benoist Tzien, Hashem bathed the excrement of the daughters of Tzir. And so the Maggid says, not only he bathes their excrement, Rachatz Hashem, he has to bathe his own. Because their filth becomes his. Because your child is engraved in you. And it, it's part of you. So therefore, whatever is there, that becomes him, Kevayachal. That's how deep the relationship is. That's what the Maggid of Mizrich teaches. But there's no such a thing as disconnecting. It's not disconnecting. There's no such a thing. You disconnect. You're too dirty. I disconnect. That that that's not an option. Okay. Tomorrow there'll be a shear of Ezra Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu, he must have seen Hashem differently than the infant and the teenager. In other words, the image. Of course. But that's not what He's just talking about the example of Sur Meira. When a person goes away from that which is Ra for him, that's a tremendous, I mean, that's a daily exercise. No, no, I think a mechanism is good as long as you can always examine it and make sure the mechanism is coming from strength, not from weakness. That's it. Building a dam against a current of water that's flooding your house is a good thing. <laughs> Right? That's a good thing. But if I build a dam, because I don't want to deal with myself, and I'm afraid of real relationships, so then I'm undermining it. So then I have to get rid of those dams, and I have to have the courage to be able to examine which dams are promoting my true values, and which dams are just distracting me from my true values connection. But you're 100 percent right. We all we want to create protective. We do that. We live in shelter. We live in homes. <laughs> I don't know the whole, but uh, you understood. Very deep. The self, the self discovery and self elation and self realization that comes from this type of symptom in your life is incredibly powerful. It almost allows you to re sometimes to reshape everything. Because you go back to the start. Yeah. It's like almost your own eye in, like you go back to your own eye in. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.